blockchain is one of the most important uh, uh, you know technological advancement that has happened in the history of internet i mean from 2000 to 2018 the internet has disrupted everything and from 2018 to 2025 blockchain is going to disrupt everything that is on the internet the biggest benefit of blockchain is that it is not a platform it is a technology which is sitting on the internet it's decentralized that is no one no one centrally controls an ecosystem when it's on blockchain and take the example of bitcoin there are millions of nodes which are available in the world which are running the bitcoin ecosystem and those who are unable to understand nodes i'll give you a very simple example how many of you used torrent before ever in your life you download any kind of files or anything or ever even heard about torrent now what happens in torrent torrent is a peer-to-peer -peer network system in which allows you to download files from different participants now in the torrent what happens it's a it's a peer-to-peer -peer distributed network now let's say if i am a user and there are five more users in the ecosystem and let me explain you maybe a little bit of paint let's say there are there are five participants in an ecosystem of torrent okay and this is me now that's, this is me now I want to download a file which is actually available with all these three people and they're actually connected in a network the moment I will down send a download request which is again a transactional request I will start getting the files from all these three users now that's a distributed network that is one of the biggest part of blockchain when we talk about distributed ledger ecosystem that's what distributed is all about and when you see this kind of infrastructure what happens that that one of the biggest challenges in, in a distributed ecosystem was that that all the transactions that I am doing, they are not safe and secure. That means the file that I am actually downloading from these people, I am not really sure what is coming to my computer. That there is no way for me to verify what kind of authentication I would need in order to verify a file. And that's what the biggest challenge. So what blockchain did, blockchain said, fine, you know, let's go to the example of Bitcoin. Right now. In order to, for me to send money from A to B, which I do in this way, straight away, we think this is straight away, but that's not because the moment you have a money transferred, you have certain intermediaries who are involved in between in order to get the authentication, the verification, or the auditing gets done. So let's say I send money from my bank account to a different bank account. The first thing there will be auditor, there will be verifier, and regulator. All these three people combine together in order to give a, a period their result unless my transaction is verified and the funds are being transferred. So if I'm sending let's say ten dollar, the other party will always repeat receive let's say for example nine point eight dollar because twenty cents is actually gone into the fees. And you might have seen that the moment you send a money from a bank on every time, you will see there's a deduction in because there's always a service fee which the bank charges. And this is what the bank charges because they have so many people in between the middleman. Who are actually not required because if I have to send my money from A to B, I just need A and B, no one else. Then why do I need these people? Now, how blockchain comes into play? Why Bitcoin even came into existence? This was the problem which the Bitcoin, uh, I would say, team, the Satoshi Nakamoto team, actually solved. So, have a quick understanding how this works. Now, the moment something happens in the Bitcoin ecosystem. What happens is that there is no central authority. There is no centralized infrastructure. So what happens? This transaction, instead of going directly to B, there are multiple nodes that we have established in the ecosystem. You know, like this. So many millions of nodes across the globe. That means there is no centralized ecosystem. And the first part of a transaction when it goes into a blockchain ecosystem is the distribution. The moment I am going to send my transaction from A to B, my transactions are you know, uh, in, in, a, in a Bitcoin or an ecosystem, they are divided in a form of public key and private key. We'll not get into that detail right away. Once you join the course, we'll go that. But a public key, you can say, is your account address or your Bitcoin address. And a private key is a key which you will use in order to access the funds which are in your addresses. So every account in the Bitcoin ecosystem has a public key and a private key, whether it's a sender or a receiver. Now, the moment someone sends a transaction or initiates a transaction, instead of going directly to B in this case, what happens, this transaction, since all the nodes are connected with one another, it's a because it's a peer-to-peer -peer system, all the nodes are connected to one another, you see in this way. The transaction will start getting distributed to, to 
to their nearest node. So this might go to this one and this one. Again, this will go to this, this node, this node, this node, so on and so forth, unless the transactions are distributed across the network. Now, what happens? The transactions is, is executed. The biggest problem that, that the Satoshi Nakamoto fixes is that, that I will not need a middleman to do that job for me. In that case, we started, in order for me to verify a transaction, I need to know what is the authenticity. And that authenticity comes from the miners, the people, the nodes that we have in between, these nodes actually mine the transaction. Now mining is, you can simply say, is the verification of a transaction. So let's say if A is sending five Bitcoins, in this case to B, now whether A actually had those five Bitcoins or not is what is being tested. And, and B, when it's being sent to B, it does B actually exist or not? Now these are the basic verification when a miner does that. And these are all mathematical computational tasks. There's no human task involved. So there's no human involved in any of the Bitcoin transaction. So when a person initiates a transaction, it goes back to the ecosystem. The miners, what they do now, obviously in a Bitcoin ecosystem, there are millions of transactions which goes every second. There are millions of transactions which goes every minute in order to uh, facilitate. So if there are, let's say, 10 users, they might be sending transactions to and forth to one another every time. So what happens? A miner in the whole ecosystem, you will see many transactions which are there in the network. So a miner starts grabbing the transactions in one by one. And what does it grabs the transactions in one block? It puts the transaction, and these are unverified transactions. There's no verification happen. So the first part of a transaction is that a transaction gets initiated, then it goes to a dist gets distributed among all the participants. Then the miner grabs the, the a number of transactions and they start mining it and verifying every transaction, start checking the authenticity of a transaction in terms of the validation. Now, once that happens. Let's say there are multiple miners who are mining the same set of transactions. There will be one miner only who will be able to submit the solution. And the person who or a miner who submits the solution is the one who actually claims the block. Now, the moment a miner submits the solution that, hey guys, in the blockchain that I have mined a block, these are the set of transactions which I say that are correct. The rest of the people who are mining at the same time will have to come on a consensus. That means they have to come on the same decision that yes, whatever this other miner has submitted that the transactions are verified or validated, I am on a consensus with them. And once the miners come in a consensus, that's where the transaction gets completed because that's when the block gets submitted to the blockchain. Now, this is a basic transaction life cycle of what happens in the Bitcoin transaction. And when this part happens, that's, that's where the B gets its Bitcoin and the transaction is completed. Now, this is just a creation of block. Now, when I say creation of block, what do you think the word chain means? Now, we have a word block. I have given an answer for that. What do you think the word chain will refer in there? Blockchain, because that's how the whole technology is evolving. What do you think the word chain will refer when I already have a block now? All right, yeah, so all the blocks are connected, but the question is that how are they connected? So let's have an understanding about that. Let's say now when a block gets formed, this is how it looks like. Now, I will look at this. Now, every block in a blockchain ecosystem is actually connected to one another. That means if I have, let's say we have block 1574, 1575, uh oh and 1576, you see that all the blocks are connected to their previous block. And that's how the chain gets connected. That means the block chain is about the connections of all the block. And every block will have different number of transactions. So that's exactly how the blockchain words came from. And I'll tell you a very funny story. The word blockchain never actually existed before the time this Satoshi Nakamoto submitted the paper or published a paper of peer-to-peer -peer exchange in which he explained the block and the chain and he combined the word blockchain hence coming and, and talking about the word blockchain. So that's exactly how the Bitcoin blockchain works like and I'll tell you that's exactly how the blockchain ecosystem looks like. Now one thing you know I, I would like to tell you that as I said, blockchain owes its name to the way it stores transactions data in the block, which are linked together, you know, to form a chain, like I showed you in the figure. Now, as the number of transactions grows, so does the blockchain. So people ask that, that is there, are there scalability issues in the blockchain? I will say no. I mean, think of an example. 
if we have an infrastructure in a company, every time the data gets increased, the companies put more and more infrastructure. Same thing goes with blockchain, that we will need more and more nodes every day as the number of transactions grows. So the, all the blocks that record and confirm the time and the sequence of the transaction, which are you know they're logged in the blockchain, with a discrete network, which is governed by the rule that we set by the, net, the Bitcoin blockchain in this case. So once, so if you see this diagram again, uh, so that it has a hash. That means every block contains a hash. Now I will not again get into much of hash, but I would say hash. You can say is a digital fingerprint or a unique identifier of a block. Okay, and so that each block contains a hash timestamp batches of what are the recent valid transactions there, the hash of the previous block in order to connect the block. So all the previous blocks hash, they link the blocks together. And what happens once a link, they prevents any block from being altered or a block being inserted between two existing blocks. Now, you all must have heard about that, that in a blockchain ecosystem, a transaction can never be manipulated. Have you all heard about that ever before? That uh, yes, in a Bitcoin blockchain or any blockchain, a transaction can never be altered, it can never be changed. So once something is there, it's there. And that's one of the biggest security feature that blockchain brings to us. So have you all heard about this kind of system that existed with blockchain? So now we have understood that, what blockchain is about. Why the blocks are not altered? What is that one thing which keeps the block altered and I cannot actually penetrate a transaction or change a transaction? Why does this happen? I've told you how blocks looks like, what a block consists of, what is a blockchain at the end of the day. But but as I said, that what is that one part that that actually you know avoids from the, the blocks from being altered or you know say a change a transaction? The previous block, if you see this example, the one that you have, that every block has a previous block hash, you know, and that hash is linking the blocks together. So what happens? These hash, these hash prevents any block from being altered or you know say a block being inserted between two existing block. In this way, what happens? All the subsequent blocks, which are like one by one by one, they strengthens the verification of the previous block and hence the entire blockchain because all the blocks are verified and they're connected to one another step by step by step and hence what is happening they're strengthened the security so in order for me so let's say take example if i have to change anything in the, if i go and change anything in block 1576 you will see what happens is that since 1576 consists of the block 15765 hash and 1575 block consists of a hash of 15754 that means if I make a change in just 1576, the change will actually go and reflect the rest of the blocks. And what happens again in the blockchain? The miners has to agree on a consensus. And the moment you see there's a change in transaction, the miners will never come on a consensus because that transaction never existed. And hence, the blocks will get rejected, the transactions will get rejected, and hence, the system becomes immutable. And the method that you can say uh, renders the blockchain tamper evident lending to the key attribute of what we call as immutability that blockchain is immutable so you know, one thing i'll tell you though, to be just to be clear while the blockchain contains the transaction state okay that all the blocks have the transactions and the data it's not a replacement for databases or messaging technology or transactions processing or business process the blockchain contains the verified proof of transaction, which is the biggest problem that we face. There's no trust. That means the blockchain essentially can say serve as a database for recording a transaction, and the benefits are are beyond those for a traditional database. So, is blockchain a replacement for database? No. But is blockchain a secure database? Yes. It's, it serves as a database for recording transaction, and it's far more you can say a, a better better way of that. So that's pretty much about blockchain that's all about. Now, again, I said Bitcoin is the big, one of the first cryptocurrencies which got involved in 2009, and, and that's where the blockchain ecosystem came into existence. Now, Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrencies, we all know about that. It used a mathematical cryptographic algorithm. Because they are called cryptocurrencies, we should understand that there is cryptography involved in their every transaction. And at any given point of time, there can only be 21 million Bitcoin that can ever be created, that means ever be mined. All right, so let me give you a quick example with the same one. 
have a look at this picture that all the blocks that I have 74 75 and 76 they all are interlinked that means if you see the purple uh, arrow which is going from 76 to 75 and a green arrow going from 75 to 76 they start connecting the, these blocks so when 1576 was created it had a hash of 1575 and hash and 1575 had a hash of 1574 the moment I try and change anything in block 1575 or try as 1576 and try and alter a transaction because the previous block hash value was fixed it will get changed too because anytime you make a single change in a transaction data the hash value gets changed and the moment the hash value gets changed what happens is that all the blocks which are linked together their values get changed and hence we cannot modify a transaction because once all the blocks have a changed value the blockchain will not accept that and I'll show you a quick example for that so this is how a hash looks like now in the Bitcoin blockchain we use a SHA 256 hashing algorithm that you can say in a layman language an encryption algorithm now see I do not have a data right now at this place and I have a hash text where the moment let's say I try something that my name is Vishal you see on the bottom the hash gets changed and that's what happens now in this case whatever transactions were there with block 1575 and 1574 that was fixed and the moment in 1576 since they all are interlinked to one another I try and make a change now in this case let's say that any transaction was let's say for example my name is Vishal the moment I even try and change one single thing in this, let's say, okay, I will say my name is Vishal Nigam, you say the hash has again changed. That means even a single space, even a single alteration in a transaction will entirely change the hash value. That means when a hash value gets changed, everything in the blocks will get changed. So I was telling you about the, the Bitcoin that there can only be 21 million Bitcoin on any even given day, and they all are on a distributed ledger. Again, quickly showing you a distributed ledger go on this website blockchain or info blocks you will see that I have different blocks which are there in the blockchain and this website is just you can say is a block explorer which helps you to see what other transactions I have and as I said that every block consists of a number of transactions so if you see this block 984 has 163 transactions block 983 has 2375 transactions and it this is the time that this block took to get mined. Now again why these blocks are taking this much of time to get mined etc. We'll talk later and how that things work. So the benefit how these 20 bitcoins are, are created. Every time a miner mines or verifies a block they get bitcoins as a reward and that's the way how bitcoins get created. So if someone asks you what are the what are the possible ways of getting bitcoins just do. Either someone sends you or a minor mines of Bitcoin. There is no other way in on earth where you can actually get a Bitcoin for. So that's how the Bitcoin creation takes place. So that's pretty much about the Bitcoin and blockchain technology. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist for more information visit our website now keep learning with intellipat